coming up on a newscast. President Yoon Sung Yeol holds an array of meetings in Spain. The focal point during a trilateral session with his American and Japanese counterparts is North Korea issues. On the sidelines of that event, the South Korean leader got busy with sales diplomacy, meeting with leaders from various countries, including the Netherlands. Topics including semiconductors and nuclear power plants are discussed. Local health authorities approved South Korea's first domestically developed COVID-19 vaccine. Sky COVID-1 gets the green light for adults over the age of 18. Hello and welcome to our newscast. I'm Daniel Che here to bring the latest. Let's begin with our top story. Negotiations continue on next year's minimum wage. Local labor and business revised their proposals again during talks in Sejong City at the Minimum Wage Commission. Labor unions lowered their demand to 10,080 Korean won, about 7 U.S. dollars and 80 cents. That's down about one cent from the second revised proposal. The business community raised their proposal to 9,331, up two cents to around $7.20. If no deal is reached by midnight, members on the committee representing the public interest will make their own proposal. South Korean health authorities approved the nation's first domestically developed COVID-19 vaccine. It gets the green light for adults over the age of 18. Lee shi introduces to us Sky COVID-1. The Ministry of Food and Drug Safety on Wednesday approved South Korea's first homegrown COVID-19 vaccine. It's from SK Bioscience and is called GBP510 or SkyCoV-1. The ministry said that it granted the approval based on standards used by other developing countries and after clinical trials were completed earlier this year. South Korea now has become the country that has both the COVID-19 treatment and vaccine. We formed a health security system that can respond to future infectious diseases more preemptively. The vaccine has also received an approval recommendation from the Ministry of Food and Drug Safety's Central Pharmaceutical Review Committee. The committee said the vaccine's neutralizing antibody response is almost three times better than that of AstraZeneca. It induces an immune response through an injection of genetically recombinant proteins and can be stored in temperatures ranging from 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. This means that it doesn't require freezer storage like with some other types of COVID-19 vaccines. According to SK Bioscience, commercial approval would be the next step, possibly later this year, depending on virus prevention guidelines. The company is also going to try to get the shot on the WHO's list of vaccines for emergency use. Sky Kobe one was approved for adults over 18 with two doses to be administered in a four-week interval. Lee si Arirang News. South Korea and Kazakhstan have been engaged in diplomatic relations for decades. One of the ways they boost partnership is through healthcare and pharmaceuticals. Many related experts and business leaders from that country paid a visit recently. Shin Yeon tells us more. Health experts and business leaders from Kazakhstan have come to South Korea to gain medical industry know-how. They will stay here for five days, visiting medical facilities and launching joint projects. I came to one of the many events in their packed itinerary. This right here is a business roundtable with Korean and Kazakh pharmaceutical companies and health service companies coming together to sign an MOU. A total of five MOUs were signed on Wednesday. South Korean companies agreed to send some of their advanced medical equipment to Kazakhstan so that the Central Asian country can expand its own medical infrastructure. The main organizer of this event, the Korea Health Industry Development Institute, said it's happy to help. We're happy to share our medical knowledge and experience. This is a great stepping stone for South Korea to become a global leader in healthcare. It's also financially beneficial. Expanding the local pharmaceutical market has been a longtime vision of the president of Kazakhstan. Since last year, President Kasim Jomar Tokayev has been active in setting up partnerships with global pharmaceutical companies. This was to increase Kazakhstan's output of domestically produced drugs and medical devices from 17 to 50 percent by 2025. In less than a year, this figure has already reached 24 percent. 
Though Kazakhstan still mainly imports from Western countries like the U.S. and Germany, the country's single pharmaceutical distributor, SK Pharmacy, says it hopes to strengthen its partnership with South Korea. We started realizing the importance of homegrown drugs and medical equipment due to the pandemic. During the pandemic, we saw our partner Korea rapidly expand its health care. The country poured so much into R&D, we decided we wanted to learn from that. Ultimately, the two countries want a win-win situation where South Korean manufacturers expand their global network and Kazakhstan boosts its own production capabilities. Shin Yeun, Arirang News. Flights to and from Kimpo and Haneda airports resume for the first time since 2020. On top of making traveling more convenient, the move is expected to help improve South Korea-Japan relations. Song Yoo-jin takes us closer to the scene. One of the most popular skyways bridging South Korea and Japan is back. Flights between Seoul's Kimpo and Tokyo's Haneda airports resumed on Wednesday after being closed for two years due to the pandemic. After being launched in 2003, the Kimpo Haneda route has become a key airway linking Seoul and Tokyo in just two hours. Before the route was suspended, 98% of the seats were occupied during peak season, with more than 2 million passengers using it every year. This is because the airports are closer to their capitals than Incheon or Narita. Travelers and airline staff are excited about the comeback. I'm going on a business trip. I used to fly to Narita, but after I heard that this route is coming back, I changed my ticket right away. With this route back, we hope the airport will soon be filled with people just like before. A special celebration took place before the first flight to Haneda took off. This is the first out of five international routes offered at this airport to resume since the outbreak of COVID-19. It's very meaningful as this will mark the start of international flights coming back to Kimpo. There will be a total of eight round trips per week, Wednesday and Saturday for Korean Air and Asiana Airlines, Thursday and Sunday for Japan Airlines, and Monday and Friday for all Nippon Airways. Back in 2019, there were 84 regular weekly flights, but more will be offered next month as demand increases and as airlines are more prepared. The decision comes as part of President Yoon suk yeols efforts to improve South Korea-Japan ties and bolster exchanges between the two countries. The government will also work to boost tourism by holding travel fairs. Currently, those traveling from South Korea to Japan can only visit if part of a package tour. While travelers to Korea from Japan need to get a C3 short-term visa from the Korean government. Song Yoo-jin, Arirang News. The leaders of Seoul, Washington and Tokyo are in Spain to bolster cooperation against North Korea's nuclear and missile programs. President Yoon Jong-il is making his debut at a NATO summit. Yoon Jong-il follows us this report. Sending a coordinated message toward North Korea. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol U.S. President Joe Biden and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida gathered in Spain on Wednesday to shore up a three-way cooperation against North Korea's nuclear and missile programs. On the sidelines of the NATO summit, their discussions reportedly included joint response measures to any provocation by the regime and ways to bring Pyongyang back to the negotiating table. Seoul's top office says it was an opportunity to reaffirm trilateral cooperation between the countries that share a liberal democracy and other common values, while recognizing North Korea's advancement of weapons as a serious threat. Prior to the NATO meeting, there was a four-way summit involving the leaders from South Korea, Japan, Australia and New Zealand, which included discussions on ways to bolster cooperation and issues related to the Indo-Pacific region. On the same day, President Yoon suk yeol is making his multilateral summit debut in Spain. At this year's NATO meeting with the Asia-Pacific partners, the South Korean president is set to deliver a speech to garner international support for the denuclearization of North Korea. Yoon jong min Arirang News. On the sidelines, President Yoon is busy with sales diplomacy, meeting with leaders of the Netherlands, Spain, Poland and Denmark. Key topics will likely be semiconductors and nuclear power plants. Yi Gyeong-un has the details. 
Topping the discussions between President Yoon Sung yeol and Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte during their bilateral session was advanced technologies. The two leaders reaffirmed their willingness to expand cooperation on semiconductors, the industry the two countries are currently leading on the global stage. President Yoon called for investment from Dutch chip equipment makers like ASML in South Korea and stable supply of semiconductor components for domestic firms. And the Dutch PN complemented their partnership works in a way that benefits both sides. Also discussed were potential exports of South Korean nuclear power plants and the Netherlands' support for Seoul's hardline policy on North Korea. The PM said he would like to visit Seoul in fall, which Yoon welcomed. Yoon also said yes to visiting the Netherlands upon King Willem Alexander's invitation. The meeting was followed by Yoon's sit-down with Spain's King Felipe VI. Then, Yoon's meeting with Polish President Andrzej Duda, with energy being the main topic. The two leaders agreed to seek partnerships on nuclear power plants and liquefied natural gas carriers amid growing need for clean energy under the global initiative of going carbon neutral. The meeting comes as Yoon recently retracted the previous administration's nuclear phase-out policy and is seeking to win imminent orders for South Korean nuclear power plants in Poland and the Czech Republic. Up next, a meeting with the leader of Denmark, hydrogen power will likely to be discussed. Young Eun, Arirang News. President Yoon is holding bilateral meetings with world leaders on the sidelines of the NATO summit. During the sessions, he aims to promote South Korea's exports to European nations through the so-called sales diplomacy. Am Ji Young explains further. The key word at the South Korean president's first NATO summit, sales diplomacy. Through bilateral meetings with world leaders in Spain on the NATO sidelines this week, President Yoon has been promoting the country's exports, its major economic driver. The presidential office says that because economic growth in China, South Korea's biggest trade partner, is slowing down, there's a need to diversify and find alternative markets. Europe is the next biggest market in the world after the United States. Europe's GDP is around 17 trillion U.S. dollars, similar to China's. Europe is our third largest trading partner. President Yoon is looking for deals to export nuclear power plants as part of his pledge to make the country a nuclear reactor superpower. First, we will go all out to win deals to build nuclear power plants in the countries that are about to choose contractors, including Poland and the Czech Republic. As part of these efforts, South Korea's industry minister Lee Chang-yang met on Tuesday with his Czech counterpart Joseph Sikila, to whom he emphasized Seoul's advanced nuclear technology proven through the Bakara project in the United Arab Emirates. In the meeting, 10 contracts were signed on nuclear energy and hydrogen between companies from the two countries, including the auto giant Hyundai Motor. An expert says nuclear power projects in Poland and the Czech Republic will bring in billions of dollars to the South Korean economy. Should South Korea export nuclear power plants to Europe, it could be deemed as the world's leading country in the field both in name and reality. Another main export the president will focus on is arms sales, for which demand is rising amid the war in Ukraine. Poland has previously asked South Korea to accelerate its military support to Ukraine. Another expert says weapon exports to NATO member countries will help South Korea gain a global competitive edge in the industry. If those planned exports lead to positive results, some expect the South Korean defense market to have the second largest share in the global market after the U.S. With the U.K. and the Netherlands, South Korea is looking to strengthen supply chains in advanced industries, including semiconductors and batteries. Om ji Arirang News. Ahead of the summit in Madrid, South Korea announced plans to establish a delegation to NATO in Brussels to delve deeper into the reasons behind this choice and the benefits of setting up the mission. Let's turn to our Min Suk Hyun. South Korea is planning to further strengthen its partnership with NATO with a diplomatic mission in Brussels, where its headquarters is located. 
This would make it much easier to hold dialogue with NATO and, of course, strengthen its networks with the 30 member states. An official from the presidential office said on Tuesday that a NATO delegation will enhance information sharing and would allow Seoul to take part in various security discussions. Experts say this reflects South Korea's willingness to expand its role in dealing with emerging security challenges like cyber threats. When we discuss security issues in South Korea, it's mostly about the Korean Peninsula and North Korea's nuclear weapons. But emerging security issues are also often discussed among the international community. So to respond to these new challenges, NATO can serve as a strong platform to address global security concerns. Professor Lee stressed the need to strengthen ties with the alliance since many emerging security issues that NATO deals with are not just limited to Europe and North America. Another expert says that establishing a delegation to NATO proves South Korea's competitiveness. A mission to NATO will be an opportunity for South Korea to play a pivotal role in areas such as cyber, space and new technologies, fields in which the country can do well in. In this sense, NATO may want South Korea to have a delegation for our technological advancements and geopolitical importance. South Korea will also sign a new partnership program with the alliance in the second half of the year. The two sides plan to establish a new strategic partnership, one that goes beyond their current security cooperation. Min Suk-hyun, Arirang News. The leaders of South Korea, the U.S. and Japan shared their thoughts after meeting for the first time in the NATO event in Madrid. Let's have a quick listen. It's great to be here again with Chris and you following our uh, detailed and productive conversations in Seoul last month and also to be joined by Prime Minister Kishida. Well, I visited in Tokyo last month and spent the last few days in Germany with the G7. And this is an opportunity to further coordinate our trilateral elections, specifically in regard to the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Our trilateral cooperation, in my view, is essential to achieving our shared objective, including a complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and a free and open Indo-Pacific. I look forward to additional dialogues in this format as we continue to strengthen our trilateral, our trilateral engagement. And we remain deeply concerned that DPRK's continued escalatory ballistic missiles and tests and potential for uh, to conduct a nuclear test. I'm particularly pleased that, that this meeting is taking place on the margins of this historic NATO summit. And that for the first time, it includes Indo-Pacific partners of Australia, Japan, New Zealand, and the Korean Republic, and uh, uh, the Republic of Korea. And attendance of uh, all four of these leaders uh, highlights the global resolve to hold Russia accountable for its brutal and unprovoked war in Ukraine and our shared determination to defend the rule based international order. And uh, with that, uh, I'd like to turn to President Yoon and for your. NATO 약 5년 만에 개최된 한미일 정상회의 지역 및 글로벌 문제 해결을 위해 삼국이 협력을 강화하고자 하는 의지를 보여주는 것입니다. 오늘 회의를 계기로 한미일 협력이 세계 평화와 안정을 위한 중요한 중심축으로 자리매김을 할수 있기를 기대합니다. え、
、まあ、かかる観点から、日米韓首脳会談が今回開催されること、これは大変時期を得たものであると思っています。えー、北朝鮮の弾道ミサイル発射に対する日米および米韓による迅速な対応を高く評価いたします、えー、また先日の日米韓防衛大臣会談において、えー、3カ国によるミサイル警戒訓練および弾道ミサイル反地追尾訓練の実施について、えー、一致をしたことを歓迎したいと思います核実験が行われた場合にも共同訓練を含め、日米韓で対応していきたいと思います。日米同盟の抑止力、対処力強化のためにも、我が国自身の防衛力を抜本的に強化していきたいと思っています。そして合わせて、拉致問題の即時解決に向けた、上及びユン大統領の指示に感謝を申し上げます。引き続き、理解と協力をお願いいたします。So these are some of the remarks made by the leaders of Seoul, Washington, and Tokyo. We will have more on what was produced during the session in our later newscast. Ukraine's leader says Russia should be expelled from the UN. Addressing the UNSC virtually on Tuesday, he emphasized the Kremlin's permanent membership should be expunged and called Vladimir Putin a terrorist. President Zelensky urged the UN to send officials to investigate and verify the recent attack on a shopping center was Russia's doing. The strike left at least 18 people dead and 50 others injured. Starting 2035, new cars in Europe must be emissions-free. This came as the EU's environment minister struck a deal in Luxembourg as part of efforts to fight climate change. The deal effectively means no new cars with internal combustion engines will be allowed to be sold in the bloc and a complete shift to EVs from 2035. A final comp compromise rather must now be negotiated with the European Parliament, which also reportedly supports a complete ban on such vehicles. The EU aims to become an economy with net zero greenhouse gas emissions by the year 2050. Two decades ago, on June 29th, North Korea opened fire in waters near the West Sea, starting the Second Battle of Yanpyeong. From this year, Seoul decided to name the battle's commemoration event the Victory Ceremony to honor the heroes who dedicated their lives to defending the country's waters. Pei Yunji has the full story. On June 29, 2002, North Korean patrol boats allegedly crossed the maritime border near South Korea's Yeonpyeong Island in the West Sea and opened fire on a South Korean frigate. This started a battle that killed six South Korean soldiers and injured 19 more. At least 10 North Korean soldiers were also presumed to have been killed. To mark the 20th anniversary of what's referred to as the Second Battle of Yeonpyeong, a commemoration ceremony was held Wednesday in the city of Pyeongtaek, about 70 kilometers south of Seoul and on the west coast. Starting this year, the Navy has decided to officially name the annual event the Victory Ceremony. This is to confirm that South Korea won the battle and to honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice while safeguarding the country. The names of the fallen sailors were each read aloud by the country's defense minister, who met the bereaved families and paid his respects. The Second Battle of Yeonpyeong was a victorious naval fight and a proud event in Korean history. Our service members blocked North Korea's provocations and inflicted significant damage on the enemy. During the ceremony, the family members took part in a wreath-laying event aboard Navy ships that were each named after the fallen sailors. I don't exactly know if my brother is up in the sky or at sea, but I have a strong belief that he's still safely guarding South Korea. These days, the West Sea near the Northern Lemon Line is safeguarded by a new 3,100-ton guided missile frigate, along with a 450-ton guided missile patrol boat and a 230-ton patrol killer. Pounds, Arirang News. Another round of heavy rainfall will be lashing the country overnight. Considering the location of the rain cloud, central regions will see the most amount of rainfall. The Salmage Palatin area in Kangundu province will see heavy downpours of up to 250 millimeters. Western central regions, including Chungcheongdu province, will see up to 150 millimeters. 
Depending on the movement of the rain clouds, intense rainfall is possible in a short period of time. Central regions are forecast to see locally heavy downpours of 30 to 50 millimeters overnight. Torrential downpours may lead to flash flooding and even landslides. In fact, landslide warning levels for this whole metropolitan area have been raised to the watch category. Humid conditions will continue for tomorrow. Morning lows in Seoul will be kicking off at 24 degrees Celsius. As for the daily highs, Seoul and Busan will get up to 27 degrees, Gyeongju 34, Gwangju will reach 31 degrees Celsius. The Seoul metropolitan area will see showers until this Friday and cloudy skies are in the forecast for this weekend. That's all for now and here are the weather conditions around the world. And that's all from us. As always, thank you for watching.